Okay, let's talk about the NMTA, Essential Academic Skills Assessment. And specifically, we're going to talk about uh, subtest three, which deals with math. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are a teacher or you're going to be teaching in the great state of New Mexico, and you're going to have to deal with this particular assessment uh, to, you know, basically get your qualifications all uh, squared away. So with that being said, we're going to be taking a look at a practice problem that you should be able to handle um, or would represent the level of math for sure that you're going to be dealing with on the essential academic skills, which is pretty much like high school level, basic high school level, algebra, geometry, etc. So if you haven't taken a look at uh, what's on this exam, at least uh, in terms of mathematics, uh, section you want to go ahead and um, do that just so you really kind of know what you're up against but um, anyway so let me tell you a little bit about myself before we get going my name is John I'm the founder of tablet class math and I am a middle and high school math teacher I've been teaching many many years so I know what it's like to take professional certification exams and you really have to study for them and again, if you are a teacher, you already know this, uh, but if you're new to teaching, you want to take all the exams you're going to be taking very seriously and really put a lot of effort in um, uh, studying for them because you don't want to retake them, although that can happen and it's happened to a lot of teachers. So um, with that being said, I want to uh, also let you know that I offer, if you need extra math help here, I offer an NMTA Essential Academic Skills Math Prep Course. I'll leave the link in the uh, description of this video if that's something that you might want to check out. But let's take a look at this problem. So here, what do we have here? Well, we've got a formula, and hopefully you recognize what that formula is. And I want you to rewrite that formula in terms of H. But let me kind of explain this here. So this formula, A equals 1 half B times H, hopefully you recognize this as the area formula for a triangle. So what I want you to do is take this formula, okay, the area, area equals 1 half base times height, and I want you to rewrite it in terms of H. Another way to think of this is to solve this formula uh, for H, okay, or rewrite this formula uh, in terms of H, and where it's basically an equivalent formula, but instead of A equals, you want H equals. So hopefully you understand uh, the question here. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a moment to kind of figure this out. Now, if you don't really, if you're not quite sure, I would still play with it. See what you can kind of do. Um, if you're totally lost, then go ahead and continue watching. But if you think you can do it, definitely uh, pause the video and see you know what you come up with. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, basically, what we're doing here when you're rewriting or solving for one uh, particular variable in a formula, we call this, uh, there's a couple of different ways to kind of think of this, but this is often called uh, solving literal equations in algebra. So unlike, let's say we had, let's replace this here. Let's say I had 10 is equal to 1 half times 6 times h, okay? So now, if I said to solve for h, but instead of this b, let's say there's a number here like 6. Actually, let's make another number 8. 6 looks too much like b. And then I have the 1 half here, and then instead of an a, I have a 10, right? So if I told you to solve for this particular, um, uh, solve this formula or this equation for h, this would be much easier, right? For most of you, be able to, oh, okay, I can kind of do this. Let's let's do this here for a moment. So what are we going to do? So it's going to be 10 equals 1 half times 8 is 4, okay, times H. So now you're saying to yourself, okay, to solve for H, I'm going to go ahead and just divide both sides of the equation by 4. So H is equal to 10 over 4, and then we can reduce that down to 5 over 2, all right? So you would be exactly correct. All right, so if you're like, given this problem, and I said solve this uh, equation for H, you could probably do that. Okay, I'm pretty confident most of you can uh, do this. If you couldn't, let's say you're at this stage, if I had 10 was equal to four times H and you were a little shaky on what to do there, that's a pretty good indication that you got a considerable uh, amount of review to do uh, you know for this assessment but wherever your starting point is don't panic just know where you're you know be honest with yourself know where your current math skills are and then you know start from there uh, you so it 
again, let me just say this. Even if you're like really weak in math, you can definitely learn math uh, to get through this exam and other exams, okay? So don't panic. You just want to know what you're up against or where your current level is so you can start uh, studying. All right, so hopefully this makes sense, but we haven't answered the question here, right? So I'm going to rewrite this formula, okay, in terms of H. So how do I do this? Well, basically, we're going to follow the same steps here, okay? So let's just kind of, let me see if I can grab this whole thing. I'm going to shift it over. Okay, let me erase this. Okay, so let's just kind of keep it right here. We had h was equal to 10 over 4 or 5 halves. Okay, so now let's take the same problem. Area equals 1 half base times the height. And now I want to solve again for h or rewrite this equation in terms of h. So what we're going to do is basically think of h as the only variable in this formula. So temporarily we kind of have to just think of a and b as a number just like we thought of it over here. Okay. So what can we do here? Well if we're thinking of a and b as a number we're going to only treat the h as if it was a variable. Okay. So we're kind of like alright what can we do here? Well, I got to deal with this one half. Okay, the easiest way to deal with this one half is to multiply both sides of this um, formula by two. Okay, so let's just multiply both sides by two. Let me do this this way. So two times a is. So let me just say why I'm multiplying both sides by two. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you could do you as long as you do it the exact same thing to the other side of an equation or formula you don't break the formula, okay? So you're basically allowed to do it. So I could multiply this by 10, 1,000, it doesn't make a difference. I'm not changing, I'm just kind of rewriting it, but you're allowed to do that in math. But the reason why I'm multiplying by two, it's gonna be very helpful for us because when I multiply the right-hand side here by two, I'm gonna get rid of this one half, okay? So let's just get start getting rid of things. Let me just keep this H highlighted because we wanna always keep that in mind that that is the variable. Okay, so I just said, hey, okay, what, what I want to do here, well, I want to get rid of this one half. Let's just get rid of it. So let's multiply both sides of this formula by two. That leaves me with two times a. I'll write that as two a. Now on the right hand side, two times one half is one. That goes away. So I'm left with just b times h. All right, so again, I just want to be thinking of the h as the only variable here. Again, let me just keep reiterating this. I have two times a, but I'm thinking of a as some sort of number. Okay, so this is gonna be like two times five or two times seven, doesn't make a difference. And then b, we're gonna think of as another number. So let's just think here for a second. If I had two times seven equals three times h, all right? So b is just some number, let's just say three, and a is some other number like seven. And here we had the two, okay? What would I do to solve for h? Well, what I would do is just simply divide both sides of the equation by 3. And that would, I would have h being equal to 2 times 7 divided by 3. 2 times 7, of course, is 14, or 14 over 3. But in here, in this particular, um, oops, let me just erase this, step of the problem, I'm thinking to myself, okay, two times a is just the product of some number, and then I have some other number in front of the h. So to get h by itself, I'm gonna divide both sides of the equation by b. That's gonna leave me with two a over b is equal to h, okay? Now we could write that, and this is the answer, by the way. I could write it this way, h is equal to two a over b. So being able to take a formula and rewrite it in another equivalent way, like something like this, is extremely important in mathematics. And it's just a process of, of algebra. Now, again, you're kind of basically using the skills of being able to solve equations. But in this particular uh, problem, this equation is really a formula. Okay, And now we're solving for a particular uh, variable, a letter, or a symbol when there's other letters or symbols in the equation.
Okay, so it's a little bit trickier than being able to solve just a regular um, equation in algebra. So that's where you would want to master first how to solve equations and then move on to something like this. But definitely this is a type of problem that you could encounter on the NMTA Essential Academic Skills Math Subtest 3. Boy, that's quite a mouthful. But anyways, as teachers, we have to deal with what we have to deal with, you know, um, you know, and again, you know, teaching as a profession, it's uh, unless you are a teacher or been a teacher, most people just don't understand what you have to do to, you know, uh, you know, get in the classroom. Myself, just like you, I have a degree. I might, well, I'll just tell you briefly about myself. I have a degree in mathematics. I have a master's degree. I've had to take certification exams, a lot of professional education training along the way. And, you know, people oftentimes think that, oh, teachers just go to college and they take a test and, you know, you know it doesn't work that way. But unfortunately, oftentimes uh, only your fellow teacher will understand what you'll go through. So I definitely get it. Um, and that's why I make these videos to help you out in any way I can. So let's go ahead and wrap, uh, wrap this video up. Again, if you like my teaching style... And my brand is really, what I try to do is really break down math in the most clear and understandable way that I can through, you know, many years of experience. But if you like my teaching so I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to my uh, NMTA Essential Academic Skills Math Prep course in the description of this video. Hey, uh, also, um, I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel, so hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I'm always creating new content. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And... Give me some feedback. Would you, you know, where are you at? Are you um, graduating college? Are you, um, have you been a teacher for a while? And now you're taking this particular uh, assessment. I know a lot of states um, are coming up with new assessments, the, um, kind of like academic skill assessments. So if you've been teaching for a long time, uh, chances are that you probably, I'm not sure uh, with the state of New Mexico, but definitely with other states, there's a lot of new certification exams that um, are now being, you know, are basically now required on top of your subject um, or grade level exams or certification assessments. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, we're going to have to deal with uh, what we have to deal with to be professionals in uh, education. But hopefully, you know, this video helps you out. Uh, let me just leave you this one last thing in terms of the math. Uh, math is generally, you know, for most people, one of the, that subject that people have a lot of anxiety about. Don't panic, okay? So if you're like have serious math phobia, don't panic. What you need is a good plan. And, uh, you know, you, but you're going to have to invest some serious time to review um, a good amount of topics. Again, on this particular assessment, uh, there's a, a lot of algebra and geometry that you're going you're gonna to want to, you know, cover so you can be confident on this assessment. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time and have a great day.